Right. We've got Anne Marie Band, uh, the tradingbook.com. She is president and CEO of the tradingbook.com, a former neuroscience researcher and corporate recruiting executive. She currently runs a mentorship program, speaks to trading firms, trains proprietary traders, and manages client trading accounts. We're very excited to have her here today. Today, she's going to talk about using trading levels to manage risk the most important process a trader will ever learn, how to identify key support and resistance levels, and the roadmap for determining quality entries and exits. Oh, that so, sounds great. <laughs> let's see if we've got her ready to get started. I see she's logged in. We'll have to get her unmuted and mm. get the screen shared. And I really appreciate she's coming in today. She actually is taking a holiday. Gosh, what? Oh, that's right. She'll have to tell us where she's traveling yeah, from. Yeah, I think there she is. I think you're still muted. Yeah, go ahead and unmute yourself. Bottom All left. Yes. All right. Hi, everyone. I am here from sunny Bora Bora, and I've been here for, today is day 14, actually. Oh. So, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, when you work hard, um, it's good to take a break. And so I keep telling myself this because I, feel a wee bit guilty, but only a wee bit. So. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> we see Thank the starfish so on the me. wall yes, behind you Yes, that's there. right. And that's a coconut I picked up from breakfast this morning. So <laughs> I plan on drinking it later. All right. Excellent. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here with a list of really incredible women. And for you guys who are really the workhorses and engines to bring this information to people. It's just, uh, it's great. And I want to say thank you so much for engineering it. It is quite a feat. So my hat's off to you and I thank you so much to be part of things today. Well, we thank appreciate you. that and you, and we are going to log off here. We'll be here to help you if you need any technical help, but otherwise we're excited to let you go. Thank you. I am going to first have a a quick um, a, a quick PowerPoint that's just four slides that tell us uh, what to do, and then um, we'll go directly into the charts to see how uh, we run that motion. So it'll be something visual for folks to say, "Hey, I want to see that step by step later. Can you send that to me?" And so, of course, we can send that, and then also we'll walk through the actual video from the space. So thank you so much. Let's start sharing um, this PowerPoint first, and we will do that. And so let's go ahead and turn this into a space. This is certainly me. I've been trading for 17 years. I've written two books, and uh, I love the markets. The wonderful gal just before us was talking about, hey, you got to like it. You got to work at it. And really, there's only one secret to success. Um, get after it and don't stop. And so, you know, certainly you want a method, but this is the most important thing that we want to look at. A lot of times when we come into spaces where we're learning about the markets, we want to say, hey, show me a strategy, show me a strategy, show me a strategy. But the most important thing that you anchor around your strategy is your risk assessment. Because remember this, trading to do it well you must trade the way a professional will trade. And so the number one thing you have to think about is if you gave your money to someone who was going to manage it and try to make it into more money for you, what would be the first thing that you'd want to make sure that they did not do? That is lose it a lot, right? So you want to make sure when you are trading as an individual, that you have spaces, and let me um, make this very small. I'll move myself out of the way. If you'd like to see how a system works, you've really got to have organized ideas, but to have a proven strategy means that it's got a risk event that is clearly defined. So everyone you hear today and yesterday they gave you organized ideas. 
They have built-in decisions. All of the things, all the good traders carry the basic parameters with them. You have clear decisions, you have defined parameters, and those clear decisions and defined parameters over time will give you the success that you want. You've got to have those and then it's going to build a confidence. Once you have organized ideas, built-in decisions, and you know that over time your strategies work, you're going to be able to confidently engage in the markets. So we have to plan this in a tier step. No matter which way you trade, there's always going to be an anchor that you're going to have to look at that's going to come right with these things that I'm talking about right here. You've got to have organized ideas. Listen, trading is an individual sport. You're going to learn from a lot of different people. We've had an incredible opportunity over the last two days to listen to a variety of techniques that have worked over time for people. What do you need to realize? Listen, they found a path that was theirs and they followed it. So when you listened over the last couple of days, find someone that resonated with you, that they said things and you went, yeah, I, I like that. That makes sense to me. And once it makes sense to you, you'll be able to build those points that allow you to move to places of increased profitability. So when do trading systems and strategies actually work? The first thing that rarely we teach about really is risk management. Risk management is paramount. And again, it's like I first said, if you have someone taking care of your money, you want to make sure that when you open it and you've paid them to do something that it's not down 50%, right? If it is, they're in a really bad slump or this person is not being able to do what it is that you want them to do. That's really how you need to look at yourself. You have to be accountable to yourself and to your risk. And I'm going to show you in a few minutes how people use risk poorly because deciding arbitrarily what their exits and entries are going to be and we're going to be able to adjust that. So that's really the big takeaway I have for you today that I think is really going to help you. I'm sitting here today because I learned to manage risk. And I learned to manage risk after I had lost a lot of money. That's really not the way we ought to do it. We ought to learn to manage risk first so that we don't lose a lot of money. But many times, because there's no barrier to entry and anybody with an account can trade, we miss the boat on that. And so my goal here is to say, wait a second, step back. You've got to realize risk is a very important thing to measure. And it can't be measured arbitrarily as, hey, I'm just going to give it a 2% range. Because what if you are at a breakout and the chart's moving well, but it's had a 12% move up? and it might retrace 10% before it gets running. The second thing that makes a strategy work is that you follow the rules. Again, we'll come back to this. It is accountability. When you trade, unless you trade for a proprietary firm, you actually work for yourself. And so when you work for yourself, you're going to see whether you can hold yourself accountable. And that truly is incredibly important as a trader. You've got to stick to your rules. So trading design for me, yes, we use a technical event, but that technical event is always based on price. We're going to look at price today, and we're going to see why a level becomes a region that everybody is engaged in and what it looks like. And it's going to be like this. We do not want to be trend leaders. We want to be trend followers. And for those of us that come to the trading game, we are normally relatively ambitious, incredibly impatient, 
and we have a desire to jump when we see things heading potentially in a certain direction. And so we really have to break that habit. We really do. And so I will share with you a little bit about that. And then we're going to think about the market as a picture book. I say this all the time. I'm a simple trader by design because too much information coming through into my sensory space gives me an overload event. And the more decisions I have to make, the less strong my decisions are going to be. Now, that's just me, right? If you are a little speedier and your mind works a little stronger or a little faster, you're going to be able to say, hey, I can use more sensory input, right? That often leads to, hey, do I want a day trade? Do I want a swing trade? How do I want to do this work? All right. So this is a very big thing that I want to teach you. It's called an OODA loop, O-O-D-A. The first part of an OODA loop, and this is every time you go to the market. One, you observe the overall view of the market. What is trend looking like? Where are we moving from one price to another? I will show you what that means when things are above trend, below trend, and how we see price action from a value buyer or a value seller's perspective move the money in certain directions. The second thing we do every single time we look at the chart is we orient. Now, a lot of times we hear somebody say, hey, that's a buy over $10. Now, let's say you don't look at the chart for six months and you remember somebody saying, hey, that's a buy over $10. And when that person had said that, the market was trending up. And now that you look at it, the market is trending down. That $10 is going to mean something totally different if you orient your space correctly. And so orientation, which is easily the most difficult skill to hone, is what we have to do every time we look at the chart. What is the price? Why is the price there? Meaning, how have buyers and sellers forced it to this range? And then, what do we do from there? Once we decide, we must say, okay, did I pay attention? Did I observe? Did I orient? And once we decide when it, time, when it comes time to act, we act. So here's what a number of us do. We observe. And then we orient. That means we use all kinds of analysis. And we think, and we think, and we overthink. And then we decide. But when it comes to the trigger point, we say, hmm, I don't know if that's going to work. Listen, trading is something that is like any sport. Any time you engage, you can lose. You've got to get comfortable with competition. Competition means every time you step into the space, you can lose. So your job, managing risk, is to say, if I lose, will this be the smallest loss that I could potentially incur in the grand scheme of things? And that is really what we are looking at. So now I want to share another piece. We are going to go directly to the motive wave chart. And we're going to start by just looking at the market. OK, so we're going to flash through a few daily trades. Now, here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about, hey, what's the overall chart doing when you think about it? And then listen to what I say after the fact. All right, and then see if it resonates with you. So we're going to go back to the ES, and we're going to use this event. Um, let me save this template if I can. I'm going to save it as standard, no VWAP. I've just got a couple of moving averages on here. They just get to tell us direction, right? They don't tell us specific motion, but they do tell us direction. And so what we can see is we were trending down, and now we are trending up, but Overall, in the last bit, we've been moving a bit sideways, right? Because if I had bought here 
and that would have been August of 2020. Here in October, I would be essentially flat if I had held on in this fade down from September and the move over. If I look at the grand scheme, I can see I am certainly still moving up. And this is one of the most important things we can look at to say, here is where buyers might position themselves. Anytime you trade, anytime at all, you must widen the chart and observe the price pressure. So for instance, if we look at this, we can see, hey, I'm nowhere near my high, but I am certainly above the last time we had resistance that turned to support. So here is the question, and forgive me, it's gotten a little warm in the room, it's all the sunshine. So what we do is we look at the chart and we say, hey, that's resistance. So when I come up into this edge, the first thing is do, it's going to fade. When you set up a trade, you have to think to yourself, no matter where it is, you have to say, if I entered here long, where would my risk be in the chart? And so the first time you bump into resistance, this means there are sellers here, right? This is selling pressure. And why is it selling pressure? Because everybody's selling. How do you know everybody's selling? Because there are no higher prices. See, higher prices cannot occur if there's a lot of selling. Higher prices only occur if there's a lot of buying. I know that's simplistic, but you have to think about it simply as that storyboard. Hey, am I moving higher or am I moving lower? And I know if I'm moving higher, that I'm going to be sitting above my moving averages and my moving averages are going to be up just like today. So when you think about a trade, look at the places where you can see everyone did the same thing. So what does that mean? Take a look here. Do you see everyone sells here for one, two, three, four days? Because these are daily charts. That's the high, that's the high, that's the high, and that's the high. That means when everybody comes here, they go, I'm finished. I'm not buying anymore. I'm going to sell. When selling turns into buying, notice most of the candlesticks are underneath the line. And then most of the candlesticks are above the line. That's as simple as it gets. When the candlesticks are above the line, when they used to be below the line, it means that all the traders are looking at this. They started being sellers and then they became buyers. That's it. Sellers became buyers. Your job is to decide what direction you want to go in and find out when everybody else is moving there. And that needs patience. The lady just before us, she said, hey, what do we know about all the really good traders? They're patient. It's going to be hard to be patient if you hop in just because something looks like it's breaking out and it pulls back way far against you and you have a much harder drawdown. So these are the things you have to look at. Where does resistance become support? And where does support, which is here, become resistance? That is support. It fails right here on the retest. So my suspicion in what the broad market is going to do is that we are going to bounce into these retest positions where it'll end up looking just like this. Sellers, sellers, and then maybe it'll turn to buyers or we have a new group of sellers. Your job, if you're going long, is to find trend. Hey, are my candlesticks moving up? Am I sitting near moving averages that are moving up? And then can I engage on the pullback? Now, I will say this. Many, 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 many traders say don't do that just by the breakout. The breakout works when trending is very steep. 
But when trending is not so steep and you buy a breakout like this one, your fading action can be quite significant and you'll get stopped out of a trade. When you get stopped out of a trade, you lose the sense of confidence that you knew what was happening. Now, I don't know if it's primarily women that are visiting us today or both a mix of men and women, but I do know this about we women. We second guess ourselves a lot. And when we make mistakes, we second guess ourselves even more. And so the question is, can we build a strategy that allows us to second guess ourselves less. And this is what we are looking for. Now notice, for this chart, we're going to look at how markets look different. So this is the ES. It's not past the high of September. September 3rd was our high. But it is trying to recover. Let's look at the NQ. The NQ looks much the same way. It has not moved past the high of September, and it's also moving downward. Right now, we're in the middle of a stock picker's market. And so when you say, hey, what is a stock picker's market? It's where the broad market is not breaking higher, but individual stocks like Square, like Peloton, like Fastly, they're all breaking higher. The big problem is that our leaders that we saw early in the year, once things started breaking out, Shopify, Netflix, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, they're all starting to look like the broad market. They're breaking down. They're not making new highs like Square, like Peloton, like Fastly. Those things, we have to sit back and say, wait a second. People use sort of a really uh, big word, bifurcation. And it means that everyone is not participating the same way. When everyone is not participating the same way, it becomes a stock picker's market. So when you are looking for a trade and you're saying, hey, I want to trade something trending upward, you look for something like Shopify and you say, hey, my daily chart, where was the last time everyone sold and then all of a sudden they became buyers? Listen, that's the 170 area. So if you look at something that says, hey, I want to go long Shopify, and you say to yourself, I only want a two-point stop, that excuse me, a 2% stop, that means you've got about $3.60, maybe. What is that one? Three sixty three eighty. And so that gives you about a 180 on your stop. But see, the real area for coming into the trade is all the way down here. So you might say, whoa, I don't know if I want to do that. What if it never comes back to 170? What if it only stays at 180? Then my thought would be put an alert at 180. And when the price comes into that level, you'll be able to see Hey, I'm going to see if it closes above or below that line. If it closes above that line, I'll use that as my new support because it's breaking higher. That's old resistance. It becomes new support. I'm off to the races. I know this sounds simplistic, but I'm going to promise you it's something that works. And let me show you why. So here's the first thing. Let's go down here to the past, right? Here is resistance. It's the top of this candlestick, right? Top of this candlestick. And we can see that sellers come here, sellers come here the first time. They come here the second time. They come here the third time. And then what happens is they break out and move into the next area of resistance. Now, you might say, well, wait a second. 
how do I know it's going to stop there? You don't. But what you do know, if you're going to trade a chart, look to the left of that chart and see what it does when it gaps. And in that gapping space, see what happens after the fact. And we will notice that this chart has a tendency to fill its gaps. And so if you are looking at this and it says resistance, 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 and it breaks out, let's say you're the type of person that goes, ooh, this is a breakout. For me, any kind of gap action must come back and retrace. Remember, observe and then orient. Oh, I observe a gap. Let me see what happens with other gaps. Well, the nearest gap I completely fade, faded and went back into old resistance, new support. Look at how it comes into the same place again. Markets have price memory. Absolutely. Now, do prices break? Yes. So your job is not, hey, I'm putting a limit order in here. Your job is, hey, let me put an alert here. And if that alert goes off, I'm going to watch it to see how it behaves. And if it holds the level, I'm going to buy it. If it comes down and tests the level and closes above it, the next day it opens, I'm going to buy it into the next level. And if I get to the next level and it starts losing it before the end of the day, I'm going to take some profit. Listen. This market, if you are looking to be an investor, there are a few charts that are moving very nicely. But if you look across all of the folks participating in the market, whole times are getting much smaller. Even Berkshire Hathaway, which is sort of the benchmark of stable trading and hold to keep, their whole times are much, much shorter than they used to be. And so for us, with pockets that are not nine and 12 zeros deep, what we want to do is say, hey, can I trade from known support to known resistance? And if I come back and I hold above a level, listen, remember, the next day you would say to yourself, all right, if I open the next day above this candlestick, close, I'm going to go long. If it bounces off of this edge and I'm above this open, I'm going to go long. And that means I'm going to be on the upside. But look what happens. We wait for the pullback. The next day, we gap down. So our validation for trade is completely gone. So we wait. And then we say, wait a second. Where's the last place sellers became buyers? It's here. So let's try it. I'm going to try and get a trade. If it bounces off this edge, I'm going to, if it opens up the next day above this area, I'm going to go long. Uh, guess what? It doesn't. It gaps down again. Totally invalidates the entry. Here we come to the next stop. All right, next day, if it opens above that candlestick, I'm going to go long. Where's my stop? It's $4 below. Is that the biggest edge that I would need to keep? Yes, because if it breaks this zone, we know this chart is collapsing. It should not break this zone if buyers are present. And so we're able to hold it into the resistance zone. And if we say, all right, I'm going to take some profit because it might be sideways, I'm going to pull back. As long as it holds this level, if I can come into my old entry point or just above it, I'm going to re-enter and I'm going to keep going. And then your stop, as soon as you get past this level and it breaks out and pulls back, but it doesn't hold it, that's your new stop. So that is really, listen, we have no technical indicators on this chart. The number one thing that you want to work on as a trader is, can I see the story that's being told in these pictures? 
Can they tell me what's happening in the chart? Here's another one, Peloton, right? Peloton is just zooming. Listen, some charts are just darlings, right? And if we say traders love round numbers, and if we say, hey, listen, I want to buy Peloton here, it is a little late to the storyboard, but you can see I have three days where I came into 110 and I had trouble getting over it. So my stop really is 110 here, okay? If I want to look for a great big curve, it's really 100. Old resistance got tested for two days and then it rocketed off to the north. All right, take a look here. See how really well this sort of structure works and how you can have a little patience and decide what you want to do. Now, let's say you're a person that really feels very negative about the state of the world. You feel like we're going to you know where in a handbasket. And so your brain is sort of thinking, wow, I got to be short. The fact of the matter is the market is a positive trending machine. It's people who buy interest in other companies because they expect those companies to make them money and to make themselves money. So by nature, the market has a long slant to it. So when you trade short, you've got to be very careful about watching things come into support action and then saying, you know what, unless it's a scam and it's going to go to zero anyway, you're going to say, hey, when that comes into old resistance, new support, I'm going to have to take some profit. Sometimes traders are so excited about a chart that they will have old resistance, new support, that gets broken and then recaptured and then gets broken and then recaptured and then doesn't even come back and starts moving straight up. This in itself tells you, ooh, these guys are excited about buying, all right? So when you take a look at something like this, right, and you say, wow, I want to get involved, always think about does every place that the sellers were do they come back and present themselves as buyers? See, for me, trading, this is the only thing I will look for. Has old resistance become new support? Whatever time frame I'm looking at, that's what I'm going to be considering. And I'm going to look for the areas of proven support that say, hey, I'm bouncing off this zone. If I bounce off this zone and I open above it, can I move forward? Yes, I know that 100 is a place that I will ultimately test, but I never want to leave negative. And so if I see myself drifting off of that or I see price drifting off of that and it gaps up like this did and then immediately rolls over, I'm going to take profit. This is the most straightforward way. Listen, everything else you've used or everything else you've seen and studied. I promise you, if you add this simple layer on top of it, no matter which way you go, add this simple layer on it, you're going to be able to do wonderfully with mechanizing your risk. Because listen, the fact is, most traders run out of money before they learn how to trade. It just is what it is. Take a look at how much traders like these round numbers. And so by round numbers, I mean usually the 5 uh, or the 10, meaning 125, 130, 150, those sorts of things. Fastly, great product, great software as a service model, coming up on a space where it gapped up and immediately sellers came into view. This is troubling to me. This looks to me like this. So I'm going to be very careful if I have Fastly. That is going to be important. These are the sorts of things that you look at and you say, hey, 
all right, I understand if I want to go long, is it better for me to think to myself, wow, perhaps I have a little patience so that support gets retested or indeed if we do have profit taking does it come back into that 100 number there are a lot of charts that i am seeing that should come back into those round areas things that have been doing tremendously well like shopify and that sort of thing we have those fades they come down they move up shopify should be moving but 1100 seems like a resistance zone so again if you go hey i want to buy the breakout look to the left what has happened on every breakout did they buy higher here no did they buy higher here no how do i know because no prices are tracking higher did they buy higher here no did they buy higher here they did but then they sold right off the very next day so when it comes into this level they aren't going to be buying and holding. They're going to buy and sell off again. And they either sell off and this becomes new support and that will be your stop or your area of interest with maybe just a few pennies downward or it will be a clear breakdown path that will allow you to choose either a bearish position or a potential of waiting until the chart comes back into a formation people like to call an inverted head and shoulders pattern, right? Shoulder, head, it's going to build another shoulder and then move back up, all right? The number one thing as you look at the chart that you want to trade, think to yourself, what am I seeing right now? Take a look at Amazon. I mean, wow, this company is blazing a trail to do everything they can i mean incredible but look at what's happened to price what are people doing well they're saying hey that's overheated i'm going to take some profit and i might buy my old support but if i come into this edge up here i'm going to sell so your job if you're thinking to yourself hey what can i do it's going to be you want to wait until it breaks up and over, or if it pulls back and you go, hey, I'm going to look at this here. I'm going to watch it touch. If it closes above the level, then the very next day, if it opens above the close, I'm going to go long. Otherwise, I'm going to wait because this chart is not giving me bullish action. All right. What I would like to do now is sort of open up uh, any kinds of questions or any sorts of things that folks might want to ask from either a strategy or a pure risk perspective. Remember, balancing risk means realizing that there are groups of people that engage in certain areas. Right now, I really like FireEye. It is a part of cybersecurity. Crowdspace, CyberArk, FireEye. FireEye is the cheapest of the bunch. Um, but they've had a little bit of trouble lately, right? And they certainly are not recovering. They're a little bit out of favor. And so if you're thinking to yourself, wow, I'm interested in FireEye, buying the breakout here might be great, but see, people sold here. They sold here. I don't want to buy here if it breaks out. I have to see what it does on the pullback. And so if you're thinking to yourself, well, where do I assess my risk? The question then becomes, hey, can I see where a lot of arguing is taking place? What does arguing look like in a chart? Remember, candlesticks are pictures of people making decisions. You might say, well, I thought, some folks had said that most of market trading is algorithmic. That's exactly correct. However, those algorithms are programmed by people. 
And those algorithms are watched over by people. And so they're going to remember price. They're going to say, hey, when we came into this level, we didn't do very well holding over it. So let's take a bet that if we take it short at 12, we have a stop at 13. So it's a dollar. And if we take that short, we know everybody's down here. Excuse me, if we take it short at 1280, we know everybody's down here at 1240. Can we take the quick trade down there? Or do we wait until it gets to 1240 and we try to buy it there if we are bullish on the trade? You've got to think about that and look to the left at your candlesticks and go, wait a second. I had players up in these edges. And so if I'm going to take a short, I have to look at this number as my stop. Or if I'm going to take a long, I have to look at this number as my stop. It's the region. You get yourself closest to that edge. Listen, this game is not about how much you make. It's about how much you don't lose. And I'm going to tell you, 100%, if you get to manage that part of your trading skill, you're going to be head and shoulders above any competition at all. Okay? Any competition at all, you're going to be heads and shoulders above it. Listen, I trade very simply because I had to. In the very beginning, I used all kinds of indicators, all kinds of things. Now I just use a couple of things. And everything is based on what is the price and what are people doing at this price? What do they think about? Like, if I look at this and I draw a line here and I say, wait a second, what do people think about this number 1450? Well, they think it's a buy zone for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine out of about 17 days, right? Maybe 12 days. So we know that everybody's buying there. And this is a sort of thing that you can look at and say, hey, I'm going to buy here and I'm going to see how far they can push it. Okay. And when we look at that sort of thing and we see, hey, how far can they push it? We have to realize that things aren't going to go up. We have to pay attention if price does not advance. It's telling us a story. If price does not advance higher, pay attention to it. All right? Okay, let's open this up and let's get our folks back here to see if we've got any sort of questions and oh sure and marie hi it's yeah. raleigh here hi. Um, uh, i've been monitoring the chat and the question panel i can actually feed you some things oh, of um, course. once again uh one of the questions that came up is we noticed that many of these fine examples that you've provided here these are largely daily charts Do yes you also can this also be used on intraday charts for smaller time frames absolutely let me show you something very very interesting so let's say I look at the daily. Let's take a look at FireEye. Actually, no. Let's get something with more range. Let's take a look at Square. All right? And I've drawn all these lines on a daily formation. Okay? okay. So here is something supremely important. Big money moves on big time frames. And so what you want to be is a mover with big money. And so big money is always going to tell you a story. They're going to tell you a story when they've positioned themselves, and they're going to tell you when they're ready to move. So let's take a look at Square. And we're going to go to a four-hour chart first. And in this four-hour chart, I'm going to see, uh, let's move this up to 180 and some change. Were those the lines that were plotted on the daily chart that we're seeing there? Yes, these, yes, these were daily lines. And so now, here's how we work this. Let's say you come into the trading space at the square. The first thing you notice is where were sellers 
and where did they become buyers? Right here, we notice on this four-hour chart that sellers became buyers this morning because old resistance became new support. Now, let's say I go into a five-minute chart. On my five-minute chart, because I've done the analysis on the four-hour, on the daily, on the weekly, it tells me what's actually happening to price. And it's telling me, hey, this area is a big area on the four-hour chart. It was yesterday. So what I want to do is watch it close above the level and then hold the next candle in that space. So here's what I would do. I would say, all right, uh, it's holding 182. And this would be, of course, you guys know I am in Bora Bora. So this is why it says 5 a.m. because the market opens up at 3.30 here. Okay. And so as we move into the 5 a.m. marker, that is about ooh, um, 11 o'clock. It holds this edge. And it begins to hold over the range. Now notice, old resistance becomes new support no matter what time frame in what space. But you know the big line is 182.34. That's the line that they're going to argue around. So you want to stay away from that line unless you're very skilled. And then you'll know how to pick a bottom and rotate out if you're wrong. But if you're not very skilled, you wait for it to come into the line. You let it hold the line, close above it, and then the next candle that opens above it, you take the trade. Now, if you look at this very closely, you might say, hey, Emery, that candle opened above this candle, and it moved bigger to the upside and then closed down. Absolutely. If that line is there and you go, I'm taking the trade there, the way you assess risk is by stepping back and looking at these low candles in the overnight and saying, hey, everybody sees 181. Everybody sees that number, so my stop cannot be there. It has to be where people don't see it. So you move it a little further down. You move it to 181.50. You move it to some zone just shy of this number because algorithms will come in, stop you out, get a nice low fill, and move on to the next side. So you can still have this trade here, but notice as it breaks out, look at where it comes back to mm -hmm. old resistance, new support. It tells you you can stay in that trade because this is the big number it's got to hold. And what you want to do is take it back into the high of the morning. So absolutely, you look and say, hey, this is the pullback area. I can see it on the four hour. I'm breaking to brand new highs. This is the high of the early morning. So I know that's my target zone. See, for me, I trade into target and I leave. A lot of times I leave money on the table. But for me, it's much better because I trade to eat. So for me, it's much better to take the bird in the hand versus two in the bush. Sure. Uh, I don't even know if they say those sorts of things anymore since I'm my age, <laughs> right? So, um, but that's really what I'll do. I'll say, hey, I know this is the big zone, the daily level, that four-hour motion. If I break out, as long as I'm holding above it, I'm going to enter in that space and I'm going to trade it, and that's my target. I'm, an, I'm either going to hold to the target or if it holds and holds and holds and it doesn't break out, I don't want to leave at anything other than break even or maybe just a couple of pennies because, again, if you're trading to eat, you have to think about things in terms of, wow, I, here's my car payment today. Here's half of my house payment today. Here is my cell phone bill. Here is, and so on and so forth, right? You have to think about things in terms of doing work and getting reward versus the investor mindset that says, hey, I'm going to hold it through the ebb and flow because I believe that this is a longer-term nest egg. There's a two, there are two different kinds of mindsets that you have to work with in the space. And a lot of times, intraday traders 
come in with an investor mindset when they're trying to make a living and they're thinking about getting 20, 30, 40 percent upside when really the more legitimate one is half a percent, two percent, one percent. You just do it over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. G great answer to that question. I mean, the takeaway for me was, regardless of the time frame, there's a way that you can read the charts. They're, exactly. the, the price action is going to speak to you. There are going to be levels. You plot them. And to your point, um, take, taking a conservative approach, not worrying about leaving money at the table, you've got profit targets in mind. As you said, you trade to eat. And so from that perspective, you're happy with money in your pocket and you don't lament what you could have had. That's exactly right. And a lot of us hang on and we don't pay attention to what price is doing. We think to ourselves, hey, square is going to go to 190. That's my next round number because it's just come up into the 185 area. So it ought to hold. Yes, indeed. But it might come down to 180 first. So pay attention to what price is telling you if you're going to use those tight intraday trading forms. And if it fails to test higher, and it comes into the opening resistance range, they're telling you, hey, sellers are lining up here. They're going to line up and come right back into these old, noisy buying zones and try to do it again. And if they don't hold it, you've got to be prepared to go, hey, you know what? I'm going to take a 70 cent loss here because I don't want it to turn into $2.70. Absolutely. And, and uh, Anne-Marie, once again, you're sharing your charts here. They really are this clean. I mean, you have an oscillator at the bottom. You absolutely. have candlesticks, and that's essentially it. Yes, absolutely. There is very little on there because, you know, the goal is there are some – there have been some marvelous teachers here the last two days. And so my thought was, hey, can I share something – that won't conflict with that, but will support whatever the trader decides to go after, decides to pursue. If they look first at the landscape of players and they say, hey, okay, I see what my other strategy is showing. Does price confirm that? Does price say this is a good support zone? Does price say this is a good resistance zone? Does price say this is a good entry? Does price say this is a good exit? And if you just use those things on top of all the magnificent tools that a lot of people have been working years to develop, you're really going to be so far ahead of the game. Well, a um, couple other things that came up quickly is that uh, – there was uh, some questions came up about can this be used for trading futures? And I know that your first chart, oh, you showed the EBS yeah. and P. I, I am a futures trader. This is all I do. Uh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. 100% I'm a futures trader. Here's the difference. For those of you that are futures traders, let me explain the difference in the mentality between the ES trader and the NQ trader. The NQ trader is going to push you harder on your edges so for instance if you go hey i can see a four-day resistance zone one two three it breaks through but then comes back on the fourth day and tests so i know i've got sellers that could show up here if i break down through this formation but they will come into the zone and push it up look they push it up 130 points and so what you have to think is, listen, I know that's resistance. I'm going to run it and let them push it up. And only when it breaks down will I participate. Don't put limit orders where you think support and resistance are because the NQ will put your head in a bag and give it to you. Mm -hmm. Chop it right off your neck. So that is one of the big things between the NQ and the ES. The ES doesn't do it as much. But you can tell when intraday volatility spikes, it absolutely will. The room that I have that I've offered folks 30 days, if they just send us a note that says WIW Women in Wealth, I'll show you exactly. This is all I trade, day in, day out, futures trading. I love it because of the leverage. 
when I first started trading it, I was terrified because of the leverage. Yeah. But once you know what's going on and you manage that risk, you're going to be ahead of the game. Risk, 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 risk. Listen, think of it this way. Most of us are underinsured, right? Because we are optimistic. Hey, listen, I'm not going to get into, you know, my next a plane ride and it crash and me leave my family without XYZ. We, but we are generally underinsured. We take as little insurance as possible because we're very optimistic. And, and when we have that optimism, which is the thing that gets us out of bed because the world kicks us up and down the street every day, we've got to get out of bed because of that optimism. But that optimism also makes us think, hey, I'm just going to take this trade. I mean, I know it could go back, but pff, I don't really think it's going back. Always think the worst case scenario. Otherwise, you're going to have a gaping flesh wound to the chest. So from that perspective, now that's an image. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of boys, so all of my images are incredibly graphic. They're just <laughs> incredibly graphic. So yeah, you know, you really, you'll ne you never know how hard it's going to hurt until you don't manage the risk and then you get scared and you cannot play this game scared. No, you can't. You know, you really, really can't. You just have to put as many things in your control as possible and realize that there's going to be a lot out of your control and you're just going to have to roll with that and just build the barriers. You know, you if you're a skateboarder, you can't control where there's going to be a bump down the road, but you know that if the terrain is generally bumpy, you're going to have to slow down or just not do it. And so realize try to estimate your skill level and we always overestimate our skill levels so even when we do that we say listen if this trade goes wrong what could happen and we're never taught to think of things that way we're always taught hey look at the bright side what if and we have to consider the worst case scenario in this game sure and i you know it's interesting because we're unfortunately Anne marie we're up against we've run out of time and what has been a tremendous presentation in a very fast hour. But uh, the one thing Thanks I just so want much. to share with you, uh, just from my perspective as a trader, over this day, almost two days we've been trading, is one thing that I, I see a common thread between these very successful uh, women traders like yourself and investors have been on there is that emphasis on risk. You know, and I don't mean I don't want to generalize that women are risk averse, but they're the, the key things that we hear over and over again is the value of planning, you know, sticking to a plan, keeping a close eye on risk, not over trading. Um, basically, you know, and, and those are things, elements that I don't necessarily recognize in myself, <laughs> um, but are some just key takeaways that I just think are huge. Um, the other thing is this before we go, is there a special offer? You had mentioned something uh, about uh, putting in a 30 day for your room. That's exactly right. If you send an email to info at the trading book.com and in the subject line, write W I W our admin will set you up with 30 days free access to the room. It's $199 value. And you can come in and learn how I do this process every day. I live trade with moving markets in the first half of the day every day. And I'll be back from Bora Bora at the end of next week. And um, so you can wait until then if you like or set it up and we can get right to work when time comes. And uh, yeah, you'll get to see how it works. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Sure. Well, that's terrific. And once again, Amory, thank you so much for your time and for giving us an hour off of your vacation there. I think we're all envious of the <laughs> fact that you're in Bora Bora. But thank you very, very much for making the time to be with us. Thank you so much. See you all soon. And thanks for giving me the time, folks. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. We'll see you uh, in about an hour. I think you're coming back. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, see you then. Cool. See you that coconut. That's right. <laughs>
So once again, Anne Marie Bain, she did a terrific job uh, sharing with us how she trades the markets, and just one of the many fantastic presenters we've had over the past day and a half or so. Um, she does have a special offer here that I don't reflect on the screen here, but it is in the chat panel. But if you want to go ahead and also check her out on her website, if you go to the tradingbook.com, you're going to see that her focus there is on capturing the power of signal over noise. You can see the courses and some of the materials uh, that she has there. So please check that out. Uh, as well. So once again, fantastic presentation. We are amazingly continue to run precisely on time. And let's have a little bit more fun. How about a little quiz? Huh? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. So I think by now everybody's pretty much figured out how this works, right? Or do we need a small refresher? No, I just need to see the screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Here's the question, folks. Who was the first woman to have a seat on the New York Stock Exchange? Also something that you just wouldn't know off the top of your head, I guarantee. <laughs> I haven't known any of these. Uh, <laughs> I, knew, I only knew the Kathy Ireland one. <laughs> I knew the Madonna oh, one. Well, here we go. Earl Brown. Earl Brown. All yeah. right. Congratulations. And the answer is? Muriel Siebert. 1967, mm. one of 1,365 men. Mm -mm. Wow. I, I just have this image of her walking in Monday morning going, so guys, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, we'll have some stories to share uh, during our wine and women. Uh, Nick has a friend that worked in the... Uh, still bonds on Wall Street. Yeah. Alicia can, I'm certainly...